Forex Advisor. Um, I'm a little bit under the weather this week, so my apologies for my stuffy voice. This week, I wanted to go through step by step the key aspect of my breakout or fake out setup to understand exactly what we do, why certain things work, why they don't, and how can you tell the difference between a breakout and a fake out to become the most effective, the most profitable, the most high probability trader you can possibly be. So before we, we talk about that, let's just review the exact idea of what I do as far as a session trace uh, based breakout. We look essentially for price to establish a new direction after it passes the Asian session. So here we have the Euro dollar on Thursday, Friday layover and the Asian session I will demarcate always by around 1700 Eastern time which is 5 p.m. New York time to about 2 p.m. 2 a.m. Um, London time. So within this parameter is what I consider to be the Asian session highs and lows and we're going to see what happens in Europe and North America that will either break them to the upside or to the downside. In this particular case you see that the low here was 37.30 and um, price breaks 37.30 here at around uh, 5 o'clock in the um, uh, around yeah f about 5 a.m. Uh, New York time and continues to move all the way down into a massive uh, break much much higher much further down so the bottom line is you're only looking for the break of the Asian session because Asian session tends to be the consolidation session of the uh, 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 of the forex market and price will establish trend either in London or New York because that's where all the news comes out from and news is the critical determinant between high probability and a sort of a medium probability trade in the session based breakout because you can have two types of breakouts you can have a price breakout where price simply breaks out without any fundamental news behind it um, which is a weaker and less highly probable effect because what they're doing is they're simply trying to take out the stops but they don't have any fundamental uh, fuel to drive the price further in the direction or you can have a uh, news breakout in which case it tends to be a lot more powerful because not only do you have the break of the stop on a technical basis but you have the fundamental fuel to actually direct the price into the um, into the flow of where the fundamental news is so that's the critical difference if you can get a price break on news you generally have a much higher probability view of the direction of the move and as I said last week the key thing that I want to do with this type of setup is I always want you always want to take the uh, the break of the of the price action with a two lot position uh, where you will establish one lot take a short profit on the first lot let's say I don't know 15 20 points um, generally I, I want to take only 15 10 points on the first position and then trail trail the move all the way down and my stop in all of these um, setups is never more than 20 points so if I'm short at 37 uh, you know 37 35 I'm not going to be able to I'm going to put my stop at 37 55 because generally if the price is going to break and then retrace if it retraces for more than 20 points um, you're just wrong or it's just consolidating or it doesn't have enough power to really take it through occasionally you may have the price test of you know the level twice and um, that's a very tough decision to make unless you have fundamental news uh, behind you. I would never take a price break twice into the move. If I get stopped out on the first time of the price break, I will, I will just simply stand back. But if you do have fundamental news driving it, you may want to, uh, if you get stopped out on the first try, give it a second try and see if you can trail yourself down. So how do we do this week? Unfortunately, this week I was, I was really away from the markets all of the week, so I had very few trades, but I want to show you a couple of examples. None of them, by the way, follow my favorite method of using two units and a trail. I was simply using one unit mainly because I was away from the markets. I wasn't very, very confident. I wasn't really informed as I should have been in my trading. And I took half risks, um, which overall actually worked out well, but um, generally not a, not a perfect setup. So let me show you a couple of things that, um, that we did here. So here's the first move. This is pound dollar. Uh, Thursday night, no, Wednesday into Thursday, and as you can see, this is uh, let's just back up here. Asia sessions, Asia session highs, lows, right? Um, I'm going to demarcate this for you. So this is the 
um, Asian session low gets broken. Gets broken really on no news. There's nothing going on there in the um, in the UK land. So this was a price break. I took the price break again on a, on a one lot position with a very very tight target, tight stop, and it was just a quick scalp to the downside. I could have made a lot more money had I taken two you know two lots, but in this particular case, I really had very little fundamental drivers behind it. It was just simply pound weakness over the concerns over sovereign debt. Nothing um, exact at that moment that made me uh, that made me want to take the trade. But still, as you can see, the trade works well because momentum just simply takes you down through the uh, Asian session break. Um, let me show you the next trade. Next trade is a couple of interesting trades here. This is Euro. Again, I am um, just not as informed because I'm coming in. This is Asia session break, and I'll just pull back for you to see. Uh, as you can see, um, I'm coming in late. This is me basically trading be uh, way, way behind the uh, the price action because I'm simply... Uh, I was simply just uh, away from the markets all of this week traveling, so this is me doing sort of very amateurish work, but still works because I'm following my rules in the grand sense. The euro actually breaks the Asian session lows here at around 2 o'clock on the very weak German GDP numbers. But then at 5 o'clock, we get a double whammy of weak European German GDP and uh, uh, Chinese tightening. Now, Chinese tightening is something that was unknown at the time I shorted this. But then as soon as I, and, and I was able, I covered basically, again, very quickly, because I'm at this point, I'm just trying to capture small, small profits. I don't have a very good feel for risk. But the moment that I hear Chinese tightening occurs, I go back into the market, and I short again over here. And as you can see, you know, I, I make my, my second profit target here. I could have made more money. Again, I only, I, very little confidence because I'm just, I'm just not into the markets. One of the key things that um, is so important when you're trading these type of setups is to actually watch the markets for two or three hours prior to really get a good feel. And because I wasn't watching the markets, because I wasn't feeling confident about price flow, my trades were much smaller, both in size and in, uh, um, in lot size, than, than um, they would have been normally. And I didn't get nearly as much out of the trade as I possibly could. Now, lastly, I want to conclude by showing you why it's so hard to fight the man. And um, I want to show you actually why trading with the flow generally tends to be a much better proposition than fading the flow. Because after all of this brouhaha with the uh, Chinese tightening, we come back and I look at Aussie. Now remember that Aussie the night before had much, much stronger uh, employment numbers. So I'm thinking, you know, look, they, they took the Aussie all the way down and it's nonsense because... Uh, Really, even if Chinese tighten, the uh, the Australian RBA is going to have to raise rates because their, their economy is still getting blown out to uh, to such high levels. But here's the point: picking tops and bottoms, generally very much a mug's game. I am uh, I try to basically pick a bottom here and get stopped out, and I, I try I go back into the market because I see consolidation here, and I make my you know I make half my losses back. But the point being is that. Uh, trying to pick a bottom here was really a very, very difficult proposition. You could do it, but going with the flow, understanding, hey, Chinese came in and, and all of the key levels were broken. Look how much more money I would have made had I simply gone with the flow. The idea here is that the breakout fake out is dependent very much on news. Flow generally is a stronger trade than counter flow. But counter flow is possible, but a much more difficult position if you really want to do it. And that's pretty much it as far as trading the session-based breakouts and fakeouts they can really hopefully help you achieve high probability trades. I'm wishing you the best of luck. Next week I am back at the desk, back in the markets. Hopefully we'll have a lot more trades and a lot more setups for you and as, at BK as well. Wishing you the best of uh, holiday weekend. This is Boris Schlossberg for BK Over and Out.